Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. I am so excited you're here because as you know, I just wrote a book called What Do You Really Want? You could check it out on craftedoffer.com. And I just decided I love reading. And sometimes I'll meet people and they're like, Kayla, how do you read so fast? Why do you read so much? And I saw this quote that talked about how if you're a reader, you live at least a thousand lives before you die. And if you are not a reader, it's like you just lived your life. And that couldn't be like more true for me because every time I read, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, it helps me change my perspective and it broadens and expands my mindset about what is possible, learn from other people's mistakes. It's said that wise people learn from other people's mistakes. Foolish people learn from their own mistakes. So you can learn so much by reading. And I thought, let's do a whole episode on the importance of reading for entrepreneurs because, listen, you can get really stuck in doing the same thing over and over again because it's working. And just by reading one book, it will teach you a new strategy. It will help you see things in a new way, and it can make your life and your business so much better. So I want to tell you a story. I was 24 years old and was making multiple six figures working as a nurse. I had two different jobs as a nurse, and I had two kids at the time. I think, yeah, I only had two kids at the time, married, and I was just in the beginning stages of my network marketing career, really, you know, showing up on Facebook every day, all this stuff. And I was already having some success and I was feeling pretty good about myself. I thought, you know what? I make more money than everybody I know. <laughs> everybody I knew made less than six figures. And I'm not laughing at them. I'm laughing at myself and just my really egotistical mind back in my early 20s, okay? So I thought I was like hot stuff. One of my mentors, she goes, Kayla, you need to read this book. It's called Secrets of a Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. You should check it out. And she kept telling me, like, you got to read this book. You got to read this book. And I was like, I don't need a book. I, I'm making money. Like, I, I don't need Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. I got my mind. Like, I was so humble. <laughs> and she kept telling me for about a year. And finally, she sent the book in the mail. And I actually picked it up. And I read the first chapter. And this guy was not working as hard as I was working at the time. Remember, I'm working two jobs as a nurse and I have my network marketing side hustle, working as a mom too and a wife, had a lot going on. And here's this guy talking about how you can become financially free by making investments. And I already knew that concept, but it was like, wow, Kayla, like, Take advice from somebody who actually knows what they're doing, who has blazed the trail for you. And so that was the first book that really set me on a different path as an entrepreneur. I realized I don't want to always have to be making money, always you know, doing those home parties at the time, or I can get out of my nursing career. I can eventually completely walk away from this degree and have assets that will pay me for a lifetime. It broadened my horizon. So this is why I am so adamant about constantly reading books because you don't know what you don't know. So here I was thinking I was, I was doing well because remember everybody in my circle, I was doing better than them. So I thought I was doing good. Then I pick, pick up Harv's book and I realize, hey, <laughs> you got a lot to learn, sister. You don't know as much as you think you know. Like get humble and start taking notes. And so I read that book. Then I read Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Then I read Think and Grow Rich. And then I picked up Grant Cardone's books. And, you know, I just started to learn, learn, learn. And there is so much power in knowledge and learning. And I think what really set me apart in those beginning state days, you know, 2012, 2013, people didn't understand what a personal brand was then. I didn't even know I was building a personal brand when I was doing it. But here it was, 
the power of learning all this stuff. You know how it is when you learn something new that you are excited about, what do you want to do with it? You want to share it to people. And so that's naturally what I started to do on Facebook. I said, oh my gosh, I learned this today from Robert Kiyosaki. He was like my buddy. He still doesn't know I exist. But I would post about it on Facebook and it was just so vulnerable. It was real and authentic about my thoughts on what I was learning. And other people were starting to get passionate about what I was passionate about. They were going, oh wow, Kayla, thank you so much for teaching me this. And again, all I was doing was sharing my insights from somebody else's knowledge and experience. And what did it do? It started to set me up to have a powerful personal brand that still pays me millions of dollars today because it set me up as an authority. It showed people, hey, Kayla is constantly growing. She's constantly challenging herself. I need to turn the notifications on for her because I'm gonna learn from her. She's gonna help me go places. And if you're listening in right now, I know you're, you're wanting to be that expert in people's lives. And so how do you stay set apart? You have to constantly be challenging yourself. And the way that I stay challenged is by reading books and learning from other people. And what, what reading books also does for you is it helps you stay updated on industry trends and best practices. So because I love marketing, remember my motto is the best marketer wins. So how do you win that game today? Well, I'm constantly like picking up the marketing books. Right now it's all about AI, I'm learning more and more and more, okay? So I want you to think about that in your industry. Who are the experts that have been writing books? You better believe, you better be picking up the new ones and the old ones and gaining insights yourself. So also as you read, you're going to really expand your skill set and your expertise in different areas. I believe because I, I call myself a multifaceted entrepreneur because I'm invested in a lot of different companies. I got real estate. I have my own companies. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. And I have all my clients that I'm a spiritual advisor for or a coach for. And guess what? Because I'm constantly challenging myself, it makes me more valuable in the marketplace because I know things that most coaches don't know. I have experience in things that most coaches do not have experience in because I'll read a book and I'll go, hey, I wanna learn more about this venture capitalist thing. Let me go talk with somebody that owns a venture capital company and I'll go out to lunch with them and I'll start to get to know them and learn from them. So books will really set your soul on fire to learn more and more and more and it'll help you network and really meet great people. If I read a book that I love, I'm always trying to reach out to that author and say, hey, can I get you on my podcast? <laughs> Another thing that reading will do for you, and I know I sound like a school teacher, but I want you to become obsessed with this because when you become obsessed with growth, you are unstoppable, you are unshakable in the marketplace, and again, you become more valuable. So second thing I want you to think about is as you're reading, and you're learning how other people deal with problems, you are expanding your critical thinking models. Now, this is so important. I used to teach nursing, and there were a lot of people that would come through that were book smart. And then they would graduate the program because they were able to pass the NCLEX, which is you know the state test. And then they would come out on the floor with me and they had no people skills, no critical thinking skills because they only had the book smarts, okay? They didn't understand how to have a real life problem and deal with it in action. They realized, okay, it's not everything. <laughs> I did steps one through seven and the problem is still here because in real life, it doesn't always play out like how a book says it's gonna play out, but because you read so many books about people who are successful and the way they've handled their problems, you can look at a problem in your life and think about how to fix it in 10 different ways. So reading books enhances your problem solving abilities. The next thing that reading a book can do is it gives you a diverse perspective. So this is a funny story. I decided that I wanted to get back into fiction reading because 
I can get so obsessed with business, marketing, investing, and then sometimes my brain will not turn off at night. So I started to get into Christian fiction and I love Francine Rivers and Karen Kingsbury, by the way. I need to have them on the podcast because they are geniuses when it comes to fiction writing. And actually reading this fiction has given me a diverse perspective because some of it is historical fiction. So it takes you back in time and you realize, wow, even though, you know, they didn't have running water back in the day (laughs) or, you know, they weren't really civilized. Some people were were barbarians. A lot of people still dealt with the same problems we have today. We still have to deal with people (laughs) and every person brings a different perspective to the table and the more you can be exposed to diverse perspectives the more you're going to be able to connect with people and not offend people and still get done what you need to get done so here's another reason (laughs) why you should start reading so again remember I love Francine Rivers Karen Kingsbury I have really good solid stories. They do a lot of research to make sure that what they're teaching inside of their fiction book is actually legit. (laughs) And the last book I read by Francine Rivers, it was all based on uh, Rome when there were gladiators. And it's, think about this. It is absolutely insane that people back in the day would go and watch Christians be eaten alive by dogs by lions, by bears inside of this arena. It's insane, okay? That everybody would sit around and cheer and get excited and they would watch these people die. Like, what? This is crazy. And it, it, it reminds me of now how people love to see people fall. Think about it online. We all are scared of cancel culture, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. But, you know, we are like so scared to be canceled. And here there were these Christians who were like, I will not bow down to your false gods, feed me to the lions. And then they went and died in front of everybody while people cheered. And it's just human nature that we like to see people fall. It's sickening, disgusting, all right? And it taught me how that same problem has been existing for years where it's just that sinful nature of pride and ego and thinking you're better than other people. It's been around forever. Okay. And it's, it's sinful and God can renew your mind and take that away from you. But then the next thing this taught me was, wow, do I have faith like that? Do I have faith that right now, if it came to life or death, would I be willing to go in the arena with lions? Would you like, it's kind of crazy to think about, but people back in the day that were Christians faced it all the time. And Some people would go and just like have no fear and be fed to the lions because they knew where they were going. And how would you live your life if you had that kind of courage and that kind of faith, knowing that I'm going to go after my dreams. I'm going to stand firm in what I believe and know and trust that God has my back because Psalm 91, God will make a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He will exalt you, even if it means that Um, you know, it's not in public, but it might just be in eternity that you will be exalted. So just starting to think differently about how I would show up just from reading that fiction book. And I've been trying to be more bold with my faith ever since then, because I want to have that type of faith that I would be fed to the lions right now, if it meant standing firm for what I believe when it comes to not only to my faith, but just everything, you know, I don't like lukewarmness. Like who likes getting into a lukewarm bath? I want it to be hot or put me in that cold plunge for the biohacking benefits, okay? And I want to live my life hot, on fire for whatever it is that I'm doing. And reading that fiction book got me more on that path. So you could tell, obviously, I'm obsessed with reading all types of books. DM me if you want to know what book I'm reading right now. I have a private channel on Instagram too, where I will share some excerpts from books that I'm reading. It's it's called Daily Prayers. So you guys can join it for free. And remember, if you want to read my book that I've poured my life's work into, it's called What Do You Really Want? 
And it takes you through my take seven method to get whatever you want in your life in a faith-based way. Go to craftedoffer.com right now. There are some goodies for you if you pre-order. It comes with like a course and a bunch of other stuff that I really think will help you live your life on fire. And thank you so much for listening in.